Hi everyone, you're watching the lab demos at cloudsecuritymasterclass.com. Each of our labs have a supporting article at our website. Please check those out for a well-rounded learning experience. AWS Session Policy is a limiting AWS policy, which means that it is used to limit the maximum permissions that can be applied to an AWS session, which can either be an assumed role session or an user-federated session. Session policies are very similar to permissions boundary and service control policy in the way that instead of granting or revoking permissions, it is used to limit the total permissions. But the way it differs from these two is that it applies the limiting policy to an assumed session. On the other hand, permissions boundary applies it to an identity like user role and SAP applies to AWS accounts. This diagram shows an example of how session policies can be used in a mature cloud company. Here, a SSO portal first verifies users' credentials using the company's corporate identity provider and then assumes AWS roles to provide short-term credentials for AWS console and AWS CLI. The scenario is covered in detail at our website cloudsecuritymasterclass.com, so please check it out. But in summary, in this scenario, multiple user identities are assuming the same AWS role. And since this IAM role can only have one set of permissions via IAM policy, there is no way to segregate access based on identities. AWS session policy helps solve this problem by assigning a policy for each identity session, which can thus be customized based on user-specific details like geographical locations. In this demo, we will first assume an AWS role from an IAM user without an attached uh, session policy. And then we would attach the session policy to show the differences in residual permissions in the two use cases. So for the setup for this lab, we have created two identities. One is the user Marilyn, and uh, Marilyn has no IAM policies attached to it. So as it is, Marilyn cannot perform any actions on the AWS APIs or resources. The second identity that I've created is a role called full admin role. And uh, as the name says, the full admin role has full administrative access to the AWS APIs and resources. Now, the other interesting thing about this role is that it has a trust relationship to the root user for this account, and it has a trust relationship to the user Madeline. And what this trust relationship essentially does is that it allows the user Madeline to be able to assume this role and thus gain access to all the permissions that this role has, which is essentially full admin privileges. So I have logged in to the command line using the user Marilyn. What I've done is essentially copied over the credentials and stored them into the AWS profile called Marilyn. So in order to export those credentials, this export command loads those credentials and to verify if the user is, is Marilyn, I will run the AWS STS get caller identity command. And yes, this confirms that the user is in fact Marilyn. So now Marilyn does not have any IAM permissions attached to the user. So she should not be able to run basic commands like AWS S3 LS. This should give us an error saying access is denied when calling the list buckets operation. And so what user Marilyn can do is assume the role full admin role, which in, in the trust relationship, which we have conveniently said that this role can be assumed by user Marilyn. So let's try to do that, which brings us to the first scenario in our lab, where we are assuming the AWS role without the session policy. And let's see how that behavior rolls out. So I have copied the AWS STS assume role command here. We have put the role ARN, and given a name for this session called Marilyn session one. So let's run this. And so as you roll is successful, it has given out the credentials that we will now load in this terminal and log in to this role session now. So I have copied the credentials in the .aws credentials file, and we should now be able to log in with the user now. So I'll run the export. AWS underscore profile command 
the name of the role that I have provided in the file is role without SP. Let's confirm if the role uh, login is successful. Yes, so the logged in user now is an assume role, um, call admin role, and the name of the session is Merlin session one. Now, since we have not assigned any session policies to this role assumption, Merlin should now have full administrative uh, privileges using this role, since this role has the attached IAM policy of full administ administrator access. So let's confirm that with the AWS S3 LS command, which should now run successfully. As you can see, no error here, there are no buckets to list, so it's giving out zero results. Um, and you can also list out the EC2 instances that are currently running in a particular region and see if that is running successfully. So let me copy that command now. So this is the command to describe all the instances which are running in the US bus two region. And uh, this essentially says that there are no resources running, but since there's no error, this tells us that this command is actually running uh, successfully and this command is allowed to be run by this um, role. Now let's come to the second half of our lab and let's see how attaching a session policy to role assumption changes the behavior that we just witnessed. So I'm gonna go back to my user Marlin. And let's just confirm if the user is in fact Merlin. Yes, this confirms the user Merlin is logged back again. And now I will run the assume role command, but instead of the usual assume role command, I'm gonna have the session policy attached that command as well. So let's take a look at that command first. So this is the assume role command with the session policy attached to it. As you can see, the syntax is exactly the same. You have assume role, the ARN of the role which is being assumed, a session named, this time it's called Merlin session two. And policy ARNs is our array, which is listing all the session, session policies that are going to be attached to this session. For this use case, we are attaching the, I, the AWS managed policy called Amazon S3 full access. So what's gonna happen is that since our role has full administrative privileges, um, the session should have full administrative privileges. But since we're also attaching a session policy to this role assumption, and session policies are usually limiting policies, uh, that is they limit or they set the maximum permissions that can be that are applicable to a particular role session. Uh, the, the residual permission will be limited by what we put in the session policy. So the session will only have Amazon S3 full access. It would not have the, the root access. It will not have the full admin access. Okay, they have messed up the query here, so I'm gonna copy it back again. Okay, so now we have got the new credentials for this new session. I'm gonna load them back to the .aws credentials file and come back here to log into this session now. Okay, so I've loaded those credentials in the .aws credentials file and I'm gonna export this new profile now. Call this role with SP, meaning role with session policy attached to it. Let's confirm if the credentials have loaded successfully. Okay, I think I made a mistake. Let me go back and fix it. Okay, yes, the credentials are loaded successfully. We can confirm that the logged in user is an Azure role called Marlin session two. And let's see if we are able to run basic commands again with AWS S3 LS. So this works nicely. Let's try to create a new bucket now. So this is an S3 API create bucket command. We are trying to create a new, new bucket called test Marlin bucket. And this is successful. Let's try to run the AWS S3 LS command now. And we see the bucket that we query. Let's see if we have privileges to delete this bucket. Okay, I put the delete bucket command now for the same bucket. And yes, the bucket is now deleted. So what this means is that our assumed session has the 
AWS S3 privileges. But let's try something else. Since we know that this was provided by the session policy, this was really expected. Let's see if something like EC2 uh, privileges are also present. So we know this command was working before when we did not have the session policy attached to it. Describe instances in the US S2 region. Let's see what happens to this now. And this one gives you an error, describe instances. So this is because of the session policy as it's limiting the maximum information that this session can have, even though your user, um, the role right now has full admin, admin privileges, but for this particular session, since we have the session policy attached to it, it's limiting the maximum permissions that are allowed in the session. If we switch back to our role, which does not have the session policy attached to it, let's just double confirm to see what happens there. So I'm back in this role, let's confirm that. So back into the model in session one, let's run the same command again. And yes, this works. So this is the behavior of session policies that we wanted to cover in this lab and how the behavior of role assumption changes when a session policy is, is attached to it versus when a session policy is not attached to it. So this is it for the lab walkthrough. Keep watching out for more videos and articles at cloudsecuritymasterclass.com.